In this video, we're going to see how we can process refunds right from your Odoo system. So right now we're in a 16.3 environment. So this has a brand new UI and any new clients will be on this 16.3 environment. But any 16.0 database will work very similarly. So what we're gonna do today is process a new quotation, send it off to our customer, have them pay via the customer portal, and then we will process a refund from our accounting module. Now I have developer mode enabled just to make sure that we can see everything we may need to see. And I enabled a couple of additional settings that will allow us to uh, automate some of our processes. Under sales here, if we scroll down, we have online signature and online payments under quotations and orders. And I selected both of these boxes, which will default the values on our quotation, which will allow us to collect payment once we send off an email to our customer, alerting them of their new quotation. In addition to that, if you search invoices, and we'll scroll to we find, let's say invoice rather, and we have automatic invoice here under invoicing, and we'll select automatic invoices, which what that will do is once a customer signs and pays for their quotation, that confirms the sale order, and selecting this box will automatically create that invoice so we can skip that step. So we'll save this as well and have that enabled. From here, we created or enabled our Stripe payment provider. We can do that from our settings or from our dashboard, we can search payment providers. And we'll notice that we installed Stripe here on the top left. Any one of your payment providers, such as authorized.net, you can click on install. Refunds work with Stripe and authorized.net. Those are the two that I'm aware of. They might also work with PayPal, but I'm unsure of the other ones. So now going into Stripe here, I configured Stripe. I have it in test mode and it is published so that our customers can see it as a possible payment provider. I entered in my publisher key as well as my secret key and then generated this webhook secret. Under configurations, we set our payment journal. So here we'll typically set our journal to be, let's say a Stripe journal. Here I just have it connected to my bank account, but you'll probably want to separate that in a real world example. Moving on from there, we can now process a payment. So I'm gonna go into our sales module. I'm gonna create a new quote. And we're, this time we're gonna use customer two. And we're gonna add a product. We'll say product one. And we'll make the cost $50. Now from here, I'm gonna send this by email to our customer. And this will process, and this will send over an email to our customer, letting them know that we have a new quotation for them. And because we enabled that, autom or that payment, if you go to other information here, under sales, we see online confirmation, signature, and payment are both selected because of those default values. If you weren't, or if you didn't want to uh, collect payment or a signature, you can uncheck these uh, for each one of your quotations. Now inside of our email, I'm gonna open this link that we got as a customer to view our customer portal. And this is what your customer is going to see. Of course, this is gonna be customized and this is a very simple and out of the box example. But here is what they'll see and they can sign and pay this. They can draw their signature, accept and sign. And then this will bring them to the Stripe uh, page in order for them to process their payment. So this payment will pop up. We can click save payment details in order for us to use it in the future without having to go through this process. I'm gonna check out as a guest. I'm gonna type in a generic card here. And I'm gonna make sure we have a valid expiration date. And we'll just fill in this information and click pay. Now this is going to process. And I'm going to go back to our other screen here. And we're going to go back into Odoo. And we'll look at our orders. And now we see that has fully processed for customer two. Now once we click into this in our chatter here, we'll notice that everything has, we can see everything that happened in that chatter or from the customer portal rather, their signature here. We have the transaction that was processed and confirmed via Stripe. We sent out an automated email address or email rather. And then we have a payment transaction that's linked to the sale order number five. And by clicking on this, we can link to that payment transaction. So this payment is what links to the payment in Stripe. So every time a customer pays using a payment provider that we have configured, that generates a payment inside of Odoo. And you can find those payments inside of the accounting module. And each one of those, if connected to a payment provider, has a memo, it has 
um, all this information that denotes what, what it's linked to. So here we have it linked to our Stripe payment processor. We have saved the payment token. We have the transaction, the journal. And now if we go into Stripe, I'm going to click on payments here. And here we see uh, the first one here, five or $50 for sale order number five. And we have our customer and we have all the information associated with this. If we scroll down, we can see some additional information. We can see the charge, which is uh, connected to here. We can see that in the memo here. And if we go back to our overview, we can actually look at all transactions because this is we're going to see our refund. So here we have that $50 charge. We have our net amount. We have our fee and the sale order number five as the description. And I'm going to go to our dashboard now, and I'm going to look into our accounting module so I can search for accounting on our dashboard. We're going to go into customer invoices. And here we see the invoice for customer two automatically created and marked as in payment. And that payment transaction is automatically linked to this invoice. If we look at this payment transaction from here, again, we can see the provider reference that we've seen in our overview. We have our reference, which is sale order number five, which populates inside of Stripe as well. And this will help us with our reconciliation process. Now from here, if we want to refund, which is the point of this video, we're gonna go into our customer payments here, click on payments, and we can see this $50 charge, and we can simply click on the refund button here. Now we can elect to refund a different amount than the total amount. So if we wanted to only refund $30, we can do so. Here we'll do a full refund and click on refund. Now that's going to populate inside of Stripe as well, and it's going to say a $50 refund uh, related to sale order number five. So if I look at my Stripe transactions here, and we give that a second to process. And we see a refund for charge, sale order number five. And we've seen our original charge as well as our refund here. Now from this, we're gonna go into our customer invoice, sale order number, uh, our invoice number four here. And we're gonna click on create credit note so that we can have something to reconcile that refund against. So we're gonna click credit note here. We just say refund, we'll reverse and create that and we can confirm and we'll register our payment. Here we're using our bank journal, but again, we would probably be using our uh, Stripe journal. So I'll just process that. And now I have two payments, one as a positive amount, $50, and one as a negative amount for $50 to reconcile inside or once we export our transactions from Stripe. Now, the question that I get often is, what do we do with this uh, fee? This is not the point of this video, I'll make another one, but uh, just a quick note here, you can use reconciliation models to have an accept this variance for the fee so that you can automatically reconcile those charges where you're gonna get a net of 48.25, but the actual amount on the invoice was $50. So again, the point of this video was to show how you can process refunds. And today we did the refunds right from our customer payments. And this is the exact way where you need to do it. So inside of customer payments. Quick note here, if you wanna search for a sale order, you can always search inside of the search box and you can search for anything that's on uh, this payment here. And this will populate. So if we wanted to search for the sale order number five, we can just simply type in sale order number five and that will uh, filter our list so that we can quickly see what we need to refund.